cool. Hey guys, it's Devin here with Make Anything. I'm back, recently graduated like yesterday. So uh, of course, I'm right back at it, making videos for you guys. Now I've got this huge backlog of other projects I wanna do, so I've gotta get right back into it and start making things. The first thing I'm gonna do is this photography related project because it's gonna help me film my future videos. So if you've seen a lot of my past videos, you might remember some of them had these really cool, super close up shots of my printer while it was printing. So to get shots like that, you normally have to use a macro lens which helps you get really close with your camera and have those things in focus. But there is this pretty neat trick where you can take a standard lens, like this one that came with my camera, and if you put it on backwards, it basically turns into a kind of microscope that lets you get those close-up videos and photos. So I already own this adapter that I got off eBay, which you can screw into the front here, and that lets it attach onto the camera backwards. Pretty cool. The only problem is the part that you're now pointing towards your subject is what's normally inside of the camera and you know if you zoom in and out it kind of creates this giant cavity in there that you don't want dust and all that stuff getting inside of the camera. So what I want to do today is create a protective cover for this side of the camera lens. So I've already got this cap that goes on the back of the lens that normally covers it when you're moving it around or just not using it, but technically if this was replaced with a clear window, it would be a good way to protect that back of the lens while you're shooting with it. So I also got this neutral density filter, which is basically just a clear circle of glass. So the easiest thing would probably be to just cut a hole in the back of this cap and glue on this clear glass window, but that wouldn't look so neat and it wouldn't involve 3D printing. So, what I'm gonna do is print my own adapter that's kind of using the same mechanism as this cap to connect to the back of the lens, but it'll also make it easier to hold on to this uh, filter without having to glue things together. I just want everything to fit and look nice and be 3D printed. So, we're gonna go straight into SolidWorks and I'm gonna try to make my idea come to life. This one's kind of tricky, it involves a lot of existing things fitting together, so I'll be really lucky if I get it to work on my first try, and if not, well, that's why 3D printing is awesome. I can just try again. All right, let's do it. So I'm basically gonna recreate this cap in SolidWorks, and to do that, I'm gonna use my calipers to measure the inner diameter here, and I can also use the depth gauge on the back of this caliper to measure the position of these different slots that I'm gonna need so my printed part fits with the camera. So in SolidWorks, I'm gonna make a new part and draw on the right plane. I'll create a center line to revolve around and then I'll start recreating the shape of that lens cap. So the basic shape is something like this. So I'll make that a center line and then I'll start inputting the different dimensions based on the real measurements of that lens cap. As you saw, this inner diameter here was 54 millimeters. And that inner diameter is basically the most important measurement. For these other walls, I'll just make them about 2.4 millimeters thick because that'll make a nice sturdy part on my 3D printer. I revolve that shape and I've pretty much got the basic shape of my lens cap. Now I'm gonna do a cross section and draw on the right plane of this shape. And I'll add in those little slots that lock the lens cap in place. So the actual slot is a revolved rectangle just like this, but since I want to be able to print it on my printer without supports, I'm going to make this wall angled here. And then I'll print the whole thing upside down, so this angle will allow me to do it without supports. I'll use convert entities on this edge down here, so that I can reference the wall and add a constraint to this little slot I'm adding. And then I'll just go ahead and put in all the other measurements based on what I'm getting with my calipers. For some reason, my recording software isn't showing the pop-up dialogues here in SolidWorks, so I'm kind of not able to show every step, and it's making this a little confusing, I think, but hopefully it's helping some of you out there. Once again, I'm going to use the revolve tool, but this time, instead of doing a full 360 degree revolve, I'll do a smaller number, and that'll make the slot a shorter section of the full revolution. So 35 degrees seems to make a good-sized slot. 
It doesn't have to be exactly like the lens cap in this case, I just need to make sure to have three of them equally spaced. And to do that, I'm going to use a circular pattern. So for the axis of revolution, I can actually just click on any of these cylindrical faces, and then I'll bring down the pattern to three instances, just like it is on the actual part. So I've got my slots, and now I just need to add some stoppers. I'll create a sketch on that inside surface of the lens cap, then I'll offset the circle to line up with that slot, and create a small rectangular section. So I'll extrude it and then give it a chamfer similar to my other slot. That way it'll print more neatly without supports. And also like before, I'll do another circular pattern and make three instances of that part. So with just those steps, I now have a functioning lens cap and I just need to create a hole on the other side so that I can fit in my filter. So I'm gonna go on the back of this cap and I'll draw a circle for my cutout. I'll dimension that based on the diameter of my glass filter, and then I'll extrude that down to the stopper. I'll extrude this top edge a little higher to match the height of my glass filter, and then I'm going to create another ring on top of that that's exactly the size of the glass filter, so when I pop it in, it holds itself in place. And then I'm going to create these little notches, and I'll do three of those around the rim of this part. That way the ring can expand just enough to let that glass filter slide in and then close around it and hold it in place. I'll finish up by putting chamfers on all these corners just to make everything less sharp. And finally, I'll create this extruded half cylinder on the edge of the part and make another circular pattern but with a whole ton of instances. That way it basically creates a grip for this lens cap so it's easier to put on and off of my camera. And with those final details, I'm ready to export this as an STL and send it to my 3D printer. Okay, so the print didn't completely stick on the build plate, but it looks like it didn't warp too much. It might still work. So while I could work on the tolerances a bit more, it is kind of fitting right now, like really tight, so it kind of works out. So the final step is to press fit this glass filter, and with just a firm push, it snaps into place. And there we go, just like I was hoping, I've got a protective glass screen in front of the rest of my lens. I finished off the project with a little lens cap that was pretty simple, just a revolved part with 0.15 millimeters of tolerance all around. I mean, slipover caps like this work really well with a 3D printer if you're printing them in the same orientation because the layers of the actual print kind of grip together, so that helps it stick over and over again. For a quick design, I think this turned out pretty cool. It matches the form language of the camera pretty decently and those little blue rims give it a little extra flair. So it looks good and it works really well. Check out these shots I did of some US currency and you can see it's super magnified and it gets nice and sharp, although with a very narrow depth of field. I also did this shot of my own eye and it's pretty crazy. You can see all the little muscles in my cornea expanding and contracting. Awesome, so now I've got a great macro lens without having to actually buy a macro lens. So, I hope you guys liked the video and you're going to be seeing a lot of really cool close-up shots in future videos thanks to this bad boy. Alright, that was a successful project and I guess that makes this a productive day. That's it for this video. Until next time, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired.